It's always a leadership issue, folks. Everything rises and falls on leadership. You show me a healthy organization, you show me a great team, a great organization of two or more people, a great family, a great marriage, I'll show you a leadership thing that got them there. You show me a dysfunctional group of two or more people gathered together for a purpose, a dysfunctional marriage, a dysfunctional family, a dysfunctional team, dysfunctional organization, I'll show you a leadership issue. And several of them, probably. It's all about leadership. But it took me 12 years to finally figure it out. I worked in some really bad places with some really bad leaders. But you can learn a lot about leadership working in a sick place. You can sure learn what doesn't work. So then I write this book on leadership, and all of a sudden I'm working with the very best organizations. You know, organizations that really get it. Six of my clients are, now, are Malcolm Baldridge Award winners. You know what the Malcolm Baldridge Award is? That's the number one quality and performance award you can receive in this country. It's given by the president every year. It was started by Ronald Reagan. Six of my clients. I'm not saying this to boast. I've already told you I stole all this stuff. I can't believe people pay me to tell them this stuff. The point is the greatest organizations on planet Earth are doing this stuff. The military. I spend 20% of my time working with the military, all four branches. They're all over this servant leadership thing. The whole world is changing. Are you changing? Awesome responsibility. How many parents do we have in the room? Is that a big responsibility you signed up for? Yes. Say yes. yes. If I'm your kid, I'm stuck with you for my whole life. <laughs> right? You're it. I can never get away from that. Is that a big responsibility, Dad? How about you, Mom? How about being a boss? How many of you have employees entrusted to your care at work? Almost all of you. What's it like to work for you, man? Do you know when people spend half their waking hours in the workplace? I got a lousy boss, I got a lousy job. All you bosses, do you realize you are the topic of conversations around people's dinner tables at night? <laughs> really? Yes, you are. How you behave affects lives. Remember Norman Rockwell? He had that famous cartoon in the New Yorker magazine, four slides. First slide, the boss is screaming at the employee. Second slide, the employee goes home and he's yelling at his wife. Third slide, the wife is yelling at the kids. Anybody remember the fourth slide? It's going to be a rough night for the puppy, huh? <laughs> you think there's some truth to that? Think of the awesome responsibility of having people entrusted to your care. My experience is people don't spend enough time thinking about that. You see, this is where leadership begins. Not what are my rights, when am I going to get a raise, when am I going to get a corner office, how about a company car? You know the great servant leaders I know don't spend time thinking about their rights. You know what they're focused on? Their responsibilities. Human beings have been entrusted to my care. You know what keeps them up at night? Do my people have everything they need to win? Do my people have the tools, the training, the mission, the margin, the rules of the house, the hugs, the spanks, the communication, everything they need to win? That's what keeps them up at night. They are people focused. Herb Kelleher at Southwest, I keep mentioning Southwest. You know, Southwest, <laughs> profitable for 41 straight years. You think it's tough to make money in your industry? There ain't a more difficult industry in America to make money at than flying airplanes. Since 9 11, that industry has taken a $100 billion hit with a B. All the majors have been in Chapter 7, 11, failed, merged, all but Southwest. Flying the same aluminum tubes through the sky, paying the same, paying Boeing the same prices, same fuel, same unions, profitable 41 straight years. Kelleher was famous. Who started? He built Southwest Airlines on servant leadership. Kelleher was famous for saying, "The business of business is people. It's all about people, man. Have you learned that yet? Without people, there is no business. It's just brick mortar and funny looking equipment." So great leaders focus on the responsibility of having human beings entrusted to their care. That's where it begins. Max Dupree used to call it serious meddling in other people's lives. I like that. John Wooden calls it a sacred trust. Hope you spend a little time in your prayer closet, wherever it is you do your thinking, and ponder it now and then. That's where servant leadership begins. Point two, leadership is influence. I already talked about that. The mark you leave 
Two of our leadership gurus the last 40 years in America, maybe 50 years, Blanchard, he's been around 50 years, the one-minute manager guy. John Maxwell, he pumps out a couple of books a year. Both of them say exactly the same thing. What is leadership's influence? It's the mark you leave. We all leave a mark. Point four, leadership is not about management. <laughs> leadership is not synonymous with management. You can be an awesome manager and a terrible leader. I have met thousands in the last 30 years. Man, I've met people who could plan, budget, problem solve, organize, read balance sheets, strategic, tactical. They couldn't lead two people to the drinking fountain if their life depended on it. Let me be empirically clear here. If nobody's following, you are not leading. Management is what you do. Leadership is who you are. Have you developed the skill of being able to inspire and influence people to excellence and to action? That's the skill of leadership. A lot of organizations out there right now paying big bucks, people who know how to do that. We'll teach you our technology. We'll teach you what we do here. We'll send you to class. We'll teach you how to be a good manager. But do you know how to get a group of young people to line up and march through that wall? You got that skill? You know how to get the fire going within somebody? You know what the good news is? We have the technology of how to build that, how to build great servant leaders. We have the technology. It's been around for 2,000 years. Bad news is you've got to be willing to change. You know, you can know all about leadership and never know leadership. I meet people like this every week in my life. They think they go to class and watch some PowerPoint slides or read a book and they're going to be a better leader. Nobody ever became a better leader listening to me talk or reading any of my books. You can learn about leadership. Has anybody ever learned how to swim reading a book? Anybody ever learned how to play golf watching Tiger Woods videos? You can learn about golf. You can learn about swimming. Well, that's how leadership is. You've got to practice these things. It's not an intellectual thing. It's a skill. It's a learned or acquired ability, but it doesn't happen intellectually. Just agreeing with the principles. Guess what? Everybody agrees with the principles. I've been teaching this stuff 30 years. Never anywhere on the planet has anybody ever raised their hand and say, I disagree. Maybe today will be different. We'll see. But if you disagree, just hold up your little black card and tell me which part you disagree with. Well, respect, Mr. Hunter, that's a bad idea. We can't have that in our organization. Honesty, that's not a good idea. Kindness, humility, forgiveness, holding people accountable to excellence, commitment. Which part you disagree with, Bobby? This is apple pie and the flag. Everybody agrees with this stuff. The question is not do you agree. Everybody agrees with servant leadership. The challenge is can you get it into your game? Can you get it from here to here? And can you get it from here into your game? Head to heart and from your heart into your habits. If you don't get this stuff into your game, books and slides, this isn't worth squat. This is just information. You gotta practice this stuff. You don't manage people, you lead people. You want something to manage, go manage your checkbook. Go manage your inventory. People want to be, be inspired. Can you imagine our troops being managed into battle? <laughs> I've met some great leaders who weren't very good managers. Nobody ever accused Winston Churchill or Ronald Reagan of being a good manager. Reagan used to say, well, I can hire people to manage things. But those men knew how to inspire people after the malaise of the 70s, after World War, during World War II. They knew how to get people to dig a little deeper. How do you get people to own it? That's what leadership is. So leadership is not synonymous with management. I hope you never equate those two terms together again. Leadership is synonymous with influence. The mark you leave. 